This is the Roborock S6 Pure. It is the base model in the S6 generation of Roborock's range. Now, you may wonder why we're doing a review of the S6 after we've already released our S7 video. However, just like you can still buy an iPhone 12, despite the 13 being released, the S6 is still quite relevant in the current range. In fact, you can actually still find the S5 despite it being quite old now on many shelves. This is because Roborock are pretty good at supporting their older models and keeping them up to date. So this review is done from a 2022 perspective and it's about whether the S6 Pure is still worth buying and whether it's still relevant with some of the later models that are now available. So the S6 Pure is now the third option in the Roborock range, sitting below the new S7 of course, and below the S6 Max V. Unlike those two, which both have 2,500 pascals of suction, the S6 Pure has 2,000, so it's 20% down, although it doesn't really affect it quite as much as what you may think. Like the S7 and unlike the Max V, this one here does not have secondary object detection for things that are sitting below the line of sight of the main lighter on top of the robot. This doesn't actually mean that it just drives around randomly hitting into things. The LiDAR does most of the heavy lifting when it comes to navigation and it still does have a bump sensor on the front which is activated after only a few grams of force. Like all modern Roborocks, the navigation is brilliant. It relies on its LDS sensor for its positional navigation but more importantly it's backed up by that Roborock firmware and app. This means that you have cool features like the no-go zones or the keep out zones they're sometimes called and you can also have selective room cleaning where you can send it to clean specific rooms without attempting to clean the whole house at a time. You can obviously add this to your schedule and customize it so it does it exactly how you want each time. It also has multi-level mapping what that means, of course, is that you carry it up the stairs and once you've got the map created, the robot will automatically recognize where it is and load up the appropriate no-go zones. It is also smart home connected and it's compatible with Amazon Alexa and Google Home, although you will have to use an app like HomeBridge uh, to connect it with Apple HomeKit. It does also do mopping and will mop at the same time as vacuuming. However, it doesn't have carpet detect, so if you've got the mop attached, you will need to go into the app and add a temporary virtual wall or no-go zone to any carpet areas to prevent it from mopping on the carpet. Unlike the new generation S7, the mop is actually static as well, so it just drags it around and it's not ultrasonic or vibrating. However, as you'll see later on in the cleaning test, it still does quite well. Unlike on the Max-V and the S7, the S6 Pure does not have an electronically controlled water flow rate. This isn't super important though because there is still a physical button on the mopping pad itself. It's important to note that the S6 generation is not compatible with the auto empty dock of the S7. To look at though, the S6 Pure is quite similar to the S7. A lot of the hardware on the S6 Pure does seem pretty similar to the S7. It feels pretty solid and well made still and it looks pretty similar as well. There are two main differences that you'll see looking at the bottom and that is that the mopping attachment is sitting at a fixed height as opposed to raising over carpet on the S7 and then the other one is that the brush is a combination of bristled and rubber as opposed to straight rubber on the S7. The combination of the bristle and the rubber will pick up a lot more long hair and pet fur particularly if it's clumped up however over time a lot more will get tangled around it although it is easy to clean with the included tool. Again, it has the rubber side brush, which is better because it won't get matted with liquid when it's mopping. However, it does sound a little bit odd. It has drop sensors, of course, which stop it from falling downstairs or any fall that would hurt it, really. On the front, it has an infrared sensor, which is like a short sighted vision on the front, which helps it to slow down as it approaches walls. And on the side, we find another sensor, which helps it to align nice and close to the walls as it cleans. This means that the side brush will generally sweep up against the walls and the robot will always clean the room in an anti-clockwise direction. It has a 460ml dustbin which is large enough to clean most large sized homes. It has the exact same 5200mAh battery life as the S7 and the S6 Max V. However, because it's got a lower suction rating, I suspect that the actual runtime would be slightly longer. According to Roborock's website, they all clean up to 300 meters squared, although they will have to return to base, recharge, and then they'll resume where they've left off to clean a home that large. The S6 Pure uses the same Roborock app, which we love. When we enter, you see that the floor plan. Obviously here, you're just seeing the little test area that we've done. Normally when you're creating a map, the robot will go out and you'll see it explore and you'll see it build up. Or once the map is created, you'll see that you can see exactly where it's cleaned on each cleaning run. It's actually super straightforward to operate. You can simply start a clean by pressing the clean button or if it's off the dock, you can hit dock and it will return to charge. 
You can change the vacuuming power levels down here. We have the options for quiet mode, min, right up to max suction. In the map settings, we have the option to add a virtual barrier or a no-go zone. You just zoom into your map, you select the no-go zone, you identify the area you want to keep the robot out of, and once it's saved, the robot will not cross that red line. You can also set up a virtual wall, which has the same concept, but it's useful for keeping the robot indoor if you have the wrap sliders open and on a warm summer's day. If we had a more complete map, we could also send it just to clean a specific room, and we'll clean that room and then return to dock. Otherwise, you can do a zone clean, which is a similar concept to the virtual barrier, except it will clean inside that square. So you just highlight the area that you want it to clean, hit clean, and it will just do that and return to dock. Up the top right, we have some additional settings. We can manage the maps that we've got saved there. So on a multi-level home, we can see and add virtual barriers to each one. And when you carry it to the new level, the robot will automatically detect which level it's on based on the shape and load up the appropriate virtual walls. You can also change the robot's name in here. You can turn off the lights and you can also turn on or off the carpet boost, which just means that when the robot detects it's on carpet, it will automatically increase the suction power to maximum so that it does a deeper clean. You also have do not disturb mode, which means that it won't use any voice prompts and it will use quiet mode during that time. Of course, you can set up schedules, which is similar to setting up an alarm on your phone. Once you create one, you set a start time and then you choose whether you want to repeat it every day or on specific days, or if you just want to do it once. In the clean settings, you can choose whether it's on maximum or balanced. And if you want to get creative, you could use a mixture so you could do a quiet clean at night and then a max clean in the morning if you wanted to. In the level selection, you can choose whether it automatically detects which level it's placed on, or you can go in and you can manually select level one or level two, for example. Pin and go is like a spot cleaning setting. And it means that if you've made a mess somewhere, you can go into the pin and go, select the area, and just click go. It'll go into a spot cleaning in that area and then just return home. You can also remote control your robot vacuum and drive it around and clean things up. And here you have your cleaning history. As you can see, we've done a lot of little tiny tests and you can see exactly what it's done and how long it took. This is really useful if you have a larger home and you're not sure if it's gone everywhere. Under the maintenance section, you can see how much life we have on each of the filters and consumable parts. The app will let you know when it's time to replace them. There's also a find robot button, which just says this. Hi, I'm over here. It performed well in all of our tests, about what you'd expect for a premium robot vacuum, which are all pretty good these days. It didn't perform quite as well on seeds as the Max V or the S7, but it was still close enough that with general day-to-day -day use, you'd struggle to tell the difference, even if you had both. One thing of note, it didn't seem to flick much around with the side brush, which is good, and it picked up 39 of the 40 grams of seeds. It did better than normal at picking up the Fruit Loops, getting 18 of the 20 grams, and actually did better than the more expensive Robo options. I think this is mostly due to having a slightly higher clown clearance underneath the roller brush. As we expected, it does get hair tangled around the brush. This does mean that it does a good job at picking it up, but you will need to use the tool to clear it occasionally. This may be only every couple of weeks, depending on your home. It doesn't have object avoidance, so it did hit the cable and actually got stuck. You'll have to pick up cables and clothes etc. off the floor prior to starting it clean. On the hard floor, it only missed a couple of fruit loops, which is really good. Again, it's as good as any Roborock available on this test. It did surprisingly well on the mopping, although as the mopping pad is still a static drag around pad, it is best for keeping on top of the situation and not removing old stains. It removed almost all of the sticky syrup, but it did leave a slight stickiness to the touch. It got most of the coffee on the first pass, although it didn't get some of the powdery residue even after two passes. We weighed out the coffee powder before and after, and it collected 98%. So even after the release of the S7, the S6 Pure is still a really good option, particularly as the price has now dropped. It still does its navigation and cleaning, the real fundamentals of any robot vacuum, particularly well. It has the Roborock app, and you can have confidence that Roborock will likely continue to support it for quite some time still. The only thing to note is that it's not compatible with the auto empty dock, and that you will have to carry it between mopping areas if they're separated by carpet. 
However, if that doesn't bother you, and you're the sort of person that would prefer to buy the iPhone 12 rather than the iPhone 13 Pro Max or whatever it's called, then this is probably a good option for you. As always, let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Otherwise, please make sure to like and subscribe as we have other cool content coming, including the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra video.